Hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are taking a closer look at the museum as well as the Critopedia Nook Phone app. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So as you know, a huge part of Animal Crossing is the exploration of town or island and discovering all new fish and bugs and just generally trying to track them all down. Typically we've had an encyclopedia in past games which helps us track what we've seen and of course New Horizons is no different thanks to a Nook Phone app called Critopedia. The Critopedia app is exactly as you'd expect and records every fish or bug we encounter on the island. I'm not sure if it records having just seen them or if you have to catch them first for it to show up and be recorded but I'm hoping for both. This is always how I've kept track of the things I've donated to the museum in the past, so that would make sense. Anyway, as you can see, the app opens up on the fish section and displays any fish recorded in the Critopedia app. Just from this screen alone, we can see there will be at least 55 fish to collect, but it looks like it goes right off the page, so there's probably going to be way more than that. Using the shoulder buttons, we can also check the bug section too, which looks to be much the same with just bugs instead of fish. Again, we can expect to see 55 bugs in the game. The cool thing about the Critopedia app is we can actually check out a few details on each entry by clicking on it. Here we can see the damselfly in more detail. I absolutely love how detailed these bugs are in New Horizons by the way, although some of them do look a little too creepy. But anyway, it shows the seasons that the bug can be caught in, as well as the time of day you'll likely encounter it. And I've just noticed at the bottom there, there's actually a little donated stamp in the bottom right corner, which is a massive help because as I mentioned earlier, the encyclopedia has always been a way to check what still needs to be donated to the museum. In the past, I've always donated something to the museum for the first time I've caught it. So this stamp will definitely help make things a bit easier if you don't want to donate it straight away, for example. So I'm actually really happy about that. Thinking about it though, we probably won't even have the museum for a while, so I guess this is a good resource to check and see what will still need to be donated. Anyway, along with the fish and bugs, there will be plenty of fossils to collect too, which will appear in dig spots all around the island on a daily basis. Unfortunately, there's still no sign of deep sea creatures like what we had in New Leaf. There's not even a section for deep sea creatures in the Critopedia for them, so I guess we won't be able to dive and catch them in New Horizons, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, half the reason we collect all these things is to donate them to the museum, so I don't think we'll have too long to wait before we have it. We know that Blathers and Celeste will take night shifts this time though, with Blathers working during the day and Celeste running the night shift, much like Pelly and Phyllis used to in the post office. As you can see inside the museum, it looks absolutely massive and super detailed, which I'm loving. It looks like the fossils will be displayed down the stairs just ahead there, with the bugs or fish probably upstairs. The fossil area is very dark and looks just so good with all the different fossils on display. There seems to be a lot of the smaller fossils around the edge of the room, with the larger dinosaur statues in the middle there. I just love how realistic and big they look. That dinosaur statue there makes the player look really tiny, which is awesome, so the scale is perfect. Moving on, another room in the museum is of course the bug area, which looks absolutely gorgeous. I can't even stress how amazed I am with the visuals of this museum, to be honest. The room looks to be made up of lots of different islands, with a bunch of bridges and rivers lead into different sections, so that's pretty cool. I've just spotted some fish swimming in the rivers too, which are probably koi carp or something like that, so I wonder if they were donated or if they were already there, but I think we'll probably also see some more areas like this where both fish and bugs are in the same room. I think that would be pretty neat. One room in particular which is just amazing is the butterfly house, which I can't even describe in words really. It just looks awesome with them all flying around. And the final room in the museum we know about is the aquarium, which is where all the donated fish will live. The lighting in this room is something else and everything is just super crystal clear. Here we can see sharks and jellyfish and even a massive sunfish at the top there. So I would say the aquarium is already my favorite room. There seems to be a whole bunch of different sections too, which is really nice with tanks and walkways and just loads of areas to explore. Upstairs, it looks like we have a tropical tank that covers the whole wall with lots of colorful coral and bright fish, which is nice. But for me, it's the downstairs that I like the most because we get to walk through a tunnel and kind of go under the sea, much like you would in real life centers. And just at the end there, there looks like there's even another room to explore. So the museum is just massive and it literally blows my mind. It's just beautiful and even the water looks good. Everything just looks great. 
Of course, a few things to mention. We will have to wait to unlock the museum before we can donate things, unless Blathers starts in a tent or something like Nook does. But thanks to the handy donator stamp in the Critopedia, which we just discovered, it won't be too difficult to keep track of things like that. Once we unlock the museum, we will also be able to place it anywhere on the island pretty much and treat it like any other building and decorate the outside, which is pretty cool, with things like walls and fossils, which will really help make our museum stand out. So yeah, the level of detail of this game is just nuts. And I think it's all the information and all the detail we've seen is still only now sinking in. <laughs> Unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be any deep sea creatures to collect, which sucks. And there's still no word on whether or not we'll be donating paintings and things like that. But there's still time and I'm sure there's still more to discover. Anyway, for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any New Horizons news. Until then, I'd like to give a special thank you to this channel's Patreon supporters, you guys rock. Don't forget to head over to our Discord server too. And of course, if you got this far in the video, please comment Critter. Just to let me know you did, that would be super awesome. And please be sure to include which room in the museum is your favourite and why. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Please be sure to leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.